those are the investigation and regarding management uh, it's a bit complicated but if you make it uh, easy you can divide the management portion into some segment initially we need multidisciplinary team approach it's the common uh, pattern of in uk management multi they don't manage a child alone they used to manage a child in a team approach uh like pediatrician pediatric pulmonologist pediatric uh, gastroenterologist dietitian is an important part in the management of cf then as it's a genetic disease they involve geneticist and uh, it's a chronic illness they need psychological support they involve psychologist also and patient need physiotherapist they involve physiotherapist and the child school teacher school nurse all the people should be involved in this uh, management so uh, main management portion some you divide the pulmonary management that means respiratory care and in as it involves git we can uh, manage a nutritional part and gi part and the other part that it will easy to memorize for you okay and uh, there is another section that is uh, microbiology that means antibiotic portion you should know it this antibiotic portion uh, which antibiotic you give uh, according to your organism and according to sensitivity the common organism the my patient my cf patient commonly uh, infected with pseudomonas and one month uh, she get infected with two organism one is staphylococcus aureus and pseudomonas and most of the cases pseudomonas is sensitive to cipro thanks god uh, till now cipro is giving a broad spectrum coverage and the patient is now okay so here according to guideline if you get uh, pseudomonas uh you will give ciprofloxacin oral cipro for 6 week and also nebulized colistin and if the patient uh, is symptomatic uh, you give tobramycin and ceftazidim 2 weeks and followed by inhaled uh inhaled uh, antibiotic colistimethet colistimethet Mm, here inhaled antibiotic is mandatory because the secretion is too much sticky that the bacteria forms uh, a film like structure which is difficult to remove by oral or iv antibiotic so local inhalation antibiotic is needed that's why in cf management inhaled antibiotic is a mandatory part but in if you find that the patient is chronic uh, pseudomonas infection when you say chronic when you get more than 50% sample positive with pseudomonas in within a year if uh, within 12 months if you get more than 50% sample positive with pseudomonas you can say it's a chronic infection in case of chronic infection you should take uh, help uh, help from cf team and receive nebulized antibiotic prophylaxis for a long time like colistin tobramycin or estreonam like this and another common organism is bulkholderia capacia look go through it uh, some antibiotics uh, bulkholderia you need uh, iv nebulized antibiotics like before and mrsa is another devastating organism you need uh, ne- uh, vancomycin sometime need nebulized vancomycin also and chicken pox you should be alert for chicken pox uh, in uk guideline i noticed that they are too much cautious about chicken pox in every patient when you need to do immunosuppression like uh, nephrotic syndrome asthma or some other diseases they remain very cautious about chicken pox they check the chicken pox uh, varicella antibody if they are not vaccinated you should give uh, vzig that means varicella immunoglobulin if uh, exposed less than 96 years you should give vzig if more than 96 hours you should start acyclovir prophylaxis all the uh, causes of stridor are important here group i am not uh, teaching it from lecture note uh, you can go through your lecture note and i think i need not to explain this 
No, it's not like that. Respiratory syncytial virus is responsible for bronchiolitis. It may cause croup, but it's not the primary agent. It's para type B. No, hemophilus influenzae type B causes acute epiglottitis, yeah, not croup. Yes, para influenza virus type 1 and 2. Yes, you are right. Para influenza virus 1 and 2 is responsible for croup. Uh, but respiratory syncytia, there are some other organisms may cause croup like adenovirus. Sometimes influenza virus itself causes croup and sometimes respiratory syncytial virus and uh, also rhinovirus and sometimes mycoplasma may cause group but it's rare but main organism is para influenza virus you should know this respiratory syncytial virus is for bronchiolitis okay group uh, common age is six months to six years peak age is two years okay it commonly happens in spring and autumn Mm, um, in case of croup, I am saying it combinedly as if you could differentiate croup, acute epiglottitis, bacterial tracheitis uh, with some other ways. In croup uh, courses, the patient get an upper RTI feature like runny nose, sneezing, mild low grade fever, mild fever. Then patient develop barking cough barking cough and uh, hoarseness of voice uh, this presentation uh, patient is not toxic drooling is absent here and the patient is more or less okay not so toxic looking is present but in case of acute epiglottitis acute epiglottitis is caused by hemophilus influenzae type b uh, in that case patient remain toxic patient has high grade fever patient uh, toxic patient sit on the bed in a tripod manner always uh, they try to extend their neck like this that if they try to uh, neck in extended position uh, they feels better and drooling is common they couldn't swallow drooling is common in acute epiglottitis okay and in bacterial tracheitis uh, the presentation it's also a uh, presentation like uh, acute epiglottitis but patient is not so toxic patient can lie down on bed not uh, sitting on a tripod manner uh, drooling is not so common drooling is absent uh, absent in bacterial tracheitis but the patient is toxic all three cases which I have mentioned, uh, uh, you should not exhaust the child. In case of uh, exam, they give the scenario is confusing uh, with each other. You should know how you can differentiate uh, all the diseases. In case of croup, the patient is not toxic, ruling is absent, low grade fever and patient have uh, barking cough and stridor and in case of acute epiglottitis patient is toxic high grade fever drooling patient uh, sitting in a tripod manner uh, that's it